welcome everybody welcome to this video today we are talking about essential zen habits by leo babauta in this personality development and self improvement series of videos you have anil kumar here essential zen habits by leo babauta when our expectations aren't met we feel disappointed frustrated and sad so the problem is with the expectations and not with anything else which is our own expectation we struggle with changing the habits because we have unrealistic expectations we expect something different to happen from the same habits we expect the change in habits to be easy and we expect with that easy new habit something magnificent should come so quick in all our minds we carry a projector which is playing a movie about how things should be as we think as we assume as we presume as we would like that is our ideals about the world our expectations about how things should turn out about how others should behave and how we should be so this is our view and this is playing out in our mind subconsciously at every moment in, in every interaction of ours in every incident this perception stands in the way of are we changing our habits for betterment of our own self so reality is that we must wander outside this comfort zone we must wander outside this comfort zone so among the various habits that leo teaches us one important thing is to solidify your learning by recording your reflections what do you think about something you write it down and then you learn from it whether it is right or wrong or fair and then you see what changes you have to make and then why you are looking at a particular thing in a particular perspective you need to understand you should take mistakes in the stride you should take a long term view you should look at what really matters and even if you mess up for a day or two with a new habit it's okay as long as the long term benefits are good what you do over weeks and months and years is what is really going to matter not what you do at a particular moment but then if you keep on doing the wrong things the wrong habits if you don't change your habit then this will cascade the childish mind is a part of our mind it keeps on complaining that things are like this things are not like that it has fears it has discomforts it has inconveniences it cries for the sacrifices that it makes it just wants pleasure it just wants comfort and it doesn't want to do any hard work it doesn't want life to be difficult this is the childish mind in every one of us we can silence it by letting it know by our awareness and mindfulness that gratitude is a way of life gratitude is a resistance to the negative feelings and we have to practice gratitude and resist the negative thinkings we have to do everything we can to figure out what we missed out and then solve it so that we don't miss it out again that's a habit that we need to cultivate a key habit skill is learning to flow around the disruptions and just keep going one of the key thing that you need to learn is to keep going just to flow around not get struck in spite of in in view of in the presence of disruptions habit formation or learning a habit or unlearning a old habit or learning a new habit everything is a lifelong learning process you need to learn about yourself you need to be mindful you need to learn about the resistances and then you need to know how to flow around gradually habits become normal it becomes automatic it becomes inbuilt then you can expand it little more little more little more you can push the comfort zone levels and the territories where you are comfortable little by little every moment what does the resistance feel like why it is resisting is there a way to accept it as it is instead of resisting can you accept the discomfort and relax can we find gratitude that this disruption this resistance gave us a new learning what is a good about this discomfort what should be thankful for when you make a change others in your life might be unconsciously seeing the change as threatening that is also one disruption that is also one hurdle in the way others might be looking at the change in you as something threatening if making a commitment to yourself is not working then you have to increase the commitment by telling others making it public make the people look at you to account for your decision account to yourself and account to others 
When we experience groundlessness, a feeling of not being anchored, when you don't have a territory or an anchor or a spike, when you are not certain that things are not going your way, when you are feeling that you are at a loss, then that is something that your mind is not normal at. Mind doesn't accept such a thinking, such a feeling. So we need to have good intentions for the habit. Don't worry too much about how it will turn out because you can control that. But then intentions has to be good. And our minds don't like the groundlessness. That is why you anchor yourself to some reason and then cultivate a bad habit on the top of that some reason to justify it. Mistakes means you are pushing new ground. Because you did something new, you are having mistakes. If you are doing old thing in which you are expert at, there will be no mistakes. And there will be no new results. So exploring something, learning something is really an interesting. It's another lesson. And you are better at change and you need to go for change every day on everything that you do. Try to write down everything that triggers you to do something. Maybe towards your bad habit or towards your good habit. Before you attempt to quit a habit, learn why you are smoking, why you are drinking, why you are getting angry. Think about it. Write it down. Look at what prompts you. What is the stimulus? And then you decide how you will respond. Take things under control. What happens outside you cannot control. When somebody fires you, when somebody abuses you, you cannot control their words. But then you can control how you respond. You can control what reaction you will give to that stimulus. Take a pause. Be mindful. Be aware. Take a breath. Deep breath. Try down positive replacement habit for every negative one that you want to cut down. A habit that will meet some need or change or desire that you have in you. And look at what can be a trigger. Because if you make one change at a time, it can add up, it can stack up and it will cascade subsequently to have lots of good habits. The place bow effect, the snowball effect, etc. Watch every feeling with curiosity and kindness. Not attaching to the feeling or needing to act on it. Don't be in a hurry to respond. Don't start coloring it on either side. Just watch the feelings. Just observe. Be kind. See what you can learn from it. Don't judge. You can wish the feeling is not there. But you need to observe and see what it brings good. The real question is whether you will mess up or not is not the real question. But what you will do if you mess up? How will you rectify? What corrective action you will take? What's the learning that you have? How better you will be? That is what it is. If things don't go as planned, will you treat them as learning opportunities? That is a very important learning that you need to have. So to build a habit, to create a new habit, pick one easy habit that you can do once in a day. The atomic habits. If you want to do push-up, think of doing push-up in your restroom early in the morning. If you want to floss your teeth, think of doing one flossing after every brushing every day. One small habit you start, one atomic habit, one sliced and diced and small piece that will take you one step closer to your expected goals. Don't start right away. Create a woe, create a space, set a trigger, set a reminder. Plan yourself mentally for doing that and then go ahead and do it. One small thing a day and then when it becomes regular, then another small thing, then another small thing, then something bigger. Finally, you will have a transformation, a paradigm shift in the way you do the things. If you have to do this, you have to start with a minimum viable habit. Something small, something doable, something uh, reasonable, something realistic, something specific. Focus on enjoying that habit. You see what benefit it brings. You see what all the value it adds. Practice mindfulness. Have gratitude. Watch your mind movie and see where it is taking you in the wrong direction. Reflect. Jot it down. Rewrite it. Practice daily and increase it gradually. This is the way you can have a new habit built. Now suppose you want to quit a bad habit, then don't attempt to quit until several successful habit changes have been made. Don't just, if smoking or drinking or getting angry or lethargy and not managing time, so many things we will have. Not necessarily all are bad, but sometimes they don't give the results that you want. So we call them as bad habits. Track your habit. List what are the triggers. List the motives. List what you are enjoying in that. Find out what you will enjoy differently if something different happens. Come up with replacement habits. That is important. You cannot just make a void over there. You have to replace it to something else. Use techniques that you have learned. Gradual change versus cold turkey. Just shooting it down. Learn to recognize urges as they arise. What is urging you to do it? What's the motive? What's the desire? What's the dream? What's the expectation? What's the post-habit appreciation or 
comfort or feeling of happiness that you have form the right mindset be mindful and understand why you need to change and how you need to change and then when you fail get back on the track and then don't let it derail you suppose you decide to go to gym suppose you said not to have junk food suppose one day you fail to go to gym or suppose one day you are forced to have a burger or a cola nothing wrong but then get back to track don't let it derail you this is the way you can quit a bad habit or change into something different you are listening to essential zen habits by leo and this part of the personality development and self improvement series by anil kumar thank you for watching this video